Have you ever faced rejection in life? Rejection of jobs, people, relationships, plans, friends, schools, and so much more. Rejection is such a painful thing, especially at a young age, when you are still trying to figure out your ways and plans. It hurts in many and different ways. It is a difficult concept to understand, to try to grasp the idea that something you've worked so hard for won't be yours, or that something you've dreamed of for so many years is not for you. You think that you have been said no to by some things you desire so strongly. It is hard to understand. We've all been there. Those rejections. Rejection can be so difficult to deal with. It could bring thoughts of worthlessness, fear, insecurity, anger, resentment, self-pity, may nagat us, or even come flooding in. Yet, at such times, we can find peace and direction in the understanding that God has never rejected us. He is tenderly providing for and approving of us as His spiritual, perfect offspring. This self-true identity. Man in God's likeness. Most times, I hear people say things like, "They left me because I wasn't good enough. They didn't want me because I wasn't qualified enough. He ghosted me, or she ghosted me. They didn't reply. They weren't interested in me. I got fired from work." But have you ever considered that the rejection may not actually be their choice? Because most times. I feel people do things without any reason, but God could lead them to do it without trying to complicate things. Let me give an example. Here we go. Maybe that man or woman broke your heart because God needed to lead you to better, but maybe God allowed them to reject you because He was redirecting you to something higher. It could also be that he or she did hurt you in the worst way possible. Through that pain, God was building you up and teaching you to raise your standards and value. What if the pain that nearly broke you was the very thing leading you to God and your purpose? Scripture tells us in Proverbs sixteen verse nine that we can make our plans. But the Lord determines our steps, and just because your plan seems right to us in our own eyes, does not necessarily mean that it is so. Proverbs fourteen verse twelve. At that time of rejection, I know it doesn't feel good. No, no, no. It stings. It burns. It's heavy and it's dark. But it's in those times that create endurance, character, and testimony. As I got into my career. There were several times I did not get the job I had hoped for. I did not get the promotion I had worked so hard for. The rejections just kept piling, and finally, it was like a light bulb went on. Those things were happening for a reason, and they were all perfectly timed. I began to spin the way I viewed rejection. I started to see it as an ability. To reassess and become more acquainted with different parts of myself. In some situations, I was able to see that maybe I was not on the right path. My perspectives became clearer. Every job I was denied for opened the door to a new and better opportunity. Many times, we face rejection. We personalize it. We make the event of rejection far more than the event. We begin to identify with it. This is a failure. Therefore, I am a failure. It is important to separate what happened to us from who we are. Rejection isn't always personal. Sometimes, when someone rejects us, it has nothing to do with our fault on our part. It just means we weren't a good fit for that person, job, or opportunity. What if rejection is a redirection, away from what won't work towards what will? What if rejection is not a lost opportunity, but rather a favorable circumstance, a chance to conserve energy and resources for something more aligned, more fertile, more fruitful? Sometimes, 
God is able to shut doors in your life to stop you from ruining your own life and chasing after things that are not even in agreement with God's will for your life. What seems like rejection to you is actual fact, God's redirection. God's no is not a rejection, but a redirection. God will use what you see as a rejection by turning it into a redirection so that you can fulfill your destiny. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Sometimes in life, the enemy will present also doors of opportunity to distract us from God's will and purpose for our lives. This is why we should remain fervent in our prayers before we decide to open any door of opportunity that is presented in our lives and walk in. Most times, the devil presents those opportunities in a way that it will look so attractive. But you know just because something appears shiny or attractive doesn't make it right in accordance to God's will and purpose for us. In this redirection of thought, we will find peace and assurance. We will find that we are included in the allness and goodness of God. Rejection, belittlement, fear, insecurity are impossible within God's infinite perfect care for us. Remember God's plan is bigger and better. His purpose is to give us a rich and satisfying life. John Tenton says, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. When we feel that no one understands the depth of pain or hurts we've experienced, we can be sure that El Roy, the God who sees us, sees every bit of it. His word is a love letter to us, convincing us of his love and acceptance. So if you are in this difficult phase right now, I want you to know that God is with you and he has you in mind. So say this prayer with me. Lord, thank you that you are my shepherd. You provide everything that I need. I thank you that when rejection overwhelms my soul, that you lead me by still waters. You calm my soul and renew my strength. I do not have to fear rejection because I know that you have my best interest at heart and will walk all things out for my good. In Jesus' name, amen.